In this week's video, we're going to cover an important topic inside Lightroom, and that's metadata. Metadata is not as much fun as playing with pictures and developing your images, but it can be a lifesaver when you're trying to categorize images, locate images, and make sure that your copyright information is being published out to the world. I'm going to take you on a tour through the metadata interface, show you some of the presets that are available for that. I'm going to show you how to set up your own presets for things like copyright and studio location or general information like that. And then I'll kind of walk through how this information can be used inside Lightroom to make your life just a little bit easier when it comes to locating photos or finding photos. So with that, let's just jump over to the computer and let's get started. So I've already got the Lightroom windows open and you're gonna find I've just got a couple images loaded in here. And these are just old photos that I pulled from my library to kind of play around with. Uh, so the first one we've got uh, an image selected here and this has just already been imported into Lightroom. So it's already in my catalog. Uh, under my sample images location on my hard drive. Uh, and the area that we're gonna be focused on is really over here in the, in the uh, under the whirly for the metadata. Uh, this is an area that doesn't get a lot of attention, but is critical to maintaining a good catalog. Uh, and what I've got right here is this is the default setting for what your metadata catalog or your metadata settings would look like if you had just started using Lightroom. Uh, and you'll see it's got some basic things set up in the very beginning. So it's got a file name. It just brought the file name over for this particular photo of the location. And then you'll see everything here is blank. So titles, caption, copyright, creator, rating, those are all blank. And then again, it's got basic information like the dimensions of the photo and the date that the photo was captured. But like I mentioned before, this photo was captured several years ago. So one of the cool things you can do with the metadata inside of uh, Lightroom is the fact that you can use this information to search from. But right now you can see this is, this is pretty useless. So the first thing we wanna do is actually learn how to customize metadata. And with that, let's get our copyright information in here. I think that's one of the most important things to do. And this is something you wanna do yearly. You wanna set this up at the beginning of every year uh, to change the dates. So clicking on the customize button, it brings up a list of all kinds of metadata information that you could use. Uh, and there's a lot of good information in here. And some of this, you're just gonna to have to choose what you wanna use for your, uh, for your particular situation. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to close up some of these just to make it a little bit easier because we're mostly focused on IPTC copyright. And what we want to do is have, in my, my personal opinion, is you want to have the copyright box checked and perhaps you want to have the copyright info URL checked. Uh, in this case, we'll do that and then we'll hit done. And you'll notice over here on this page now, we've got new fields. We've got uh, a copyright field and we've got copyright info URL field so we can actually start filling this in um, on a Mac you just press option G and that will give you the copyright symbol on a Windows PC you've got to press down the alt key hit 0169 and then release the alt key and that will give you the copyright symbol uh, on a Windows PC so what we want to do is go ahead and put the copyright symbol in go ahead and put the current year Although in this case, I would have put in the, the uh, year that it was photographed, so it was 2017, but for argument's sake, we'll just do 2023. 20, and then you'll want to enter your, either your business name or your name. I generally recommend uh, your business name. So let's get that in. And then I would recommend filling in the copyright info URL as well. So we'll put my website in and hit enter. And now you'll see that that information has been uh, copied over to this photograph. The second image contains no copyright information because we haven't entered that yet. Uh, one of the really powerful features inside of Lightroom though is the ability to create presets for metadata uh, because there is some metadata that's not gonna change and that's gonna be typically the URL for your copyright information or your website. Uh, it might be the copyright year, at least it's good for a year. Uh, and you know, over time, some of these settings will change, but by and large, through the course of a year, most of them are not gonna change frequently. Uh, and so what we can do is we can create a preset for this, which will make our lives a lot easier, especially with new images. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're going to create a preset for the metadata. So what we'll do is make sure we click on metadata under the presets, we're gonna choose edit presets. And by default, it's gonna come up with a custom preset. Um, and you'll see some information is pre-populated from the fields we've entered over here. To make sure we include these, we need to put a check mark next to everything we want to include. So in this case, we'll choose the copyright, we'll choose the copyright status, the copyright URL. Uh, there's some other information that's already in here as well, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that. I'm gonna choose the creators myself, 
um, my creator website, my owner's title, um, and the rest of the fields we will leave blank for right now. So what we're gonna do then is go up to the top. We're gonna choose to save the current settings as a new preset. I'm gonna call these maps copyright info and choose create and then click done. And now you'll see under the presets right here, we have the option to do Matt's copyright information. If I select this image and I choose Matt's copyright info, you'll see it'll automatically pre-populate and apply this information to this photo. Now the trick is it's written this inside this catalog, not saved it into the image itself. So what we need to do then is right click on that file, go down to metadata and choose save metadata to file. And it's gonna give you a, uh, a prompt and ask you to save this. And by default, uh, it's not gonna write this metadata uh, into the file itself if it's a proprietary raw file. So like a Canon CR2 file or a Nikon NEF or something like that. What it's gonna do is actually write a sidecar file. So an XMP file. So in this case, we know that's gonna happen. The XMP is gonna get written. We're gonna hit continue. If I browse into my finder, or this would be the equivalent of a Windows Explorer on a, on a PC, you'll notice here's the file, the 8.084.cr2, and then here's the sidecar file that just contains the metadata file along with it. So as it stands right now, I have these two new files. If I export, let's export this file as a JPEG. So I'm just gonna export that to my desktop and I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna make sure that all the metadata is included. So that's everything we've done in this file, export this as a JPEG. And now that that has been written, I will open this up in a preview on a Mac. When I click the little inspector button, it's gonna show me a bunch of information about the file, uh, file size dimensions. If I click on the I button here information, it just shows you image about the file. It shows you all of the camera information, uh, you know, in terms of exposure, white balance, all those type of things. But what we're really concerned with in this case is the IPTC. And that's where you'll see it has populated with my name, the owner, the copyright information, if I expand this out, uh, the website for this, when the image was created. Uh, so it's really good information to have that's embedded in this JPEG file. Now, if you go and copy this JPEG file up to Facebook or something like that, that information should be retained with the file. Um, and that can help you if you ever had to go through a copyright claims case or something like that. Uh, at least you'll be able to pull the original file and show the copyright information and, and many times the JPEG will have this embedded data in there as well. Now sometimes when you upload files to the internet, uh, metadata will be stripped out of it and so you'll lose that. But this is one way to kind of give yourself some protection in that regard. Um, so let's go back to Lightroom now. I'll close this. So what we'll do now is we'll import a new photo and show you the advantages of creating a metadata preset. So I'm going to go ahead and click import to bring up the import dialog box. I'm gonna choose my sample images folder and I've got one folder to import in here. So that, that file is selected. Uh, when I go over to the file handling and apply during import section, in this particular case, what we wanna look at is the metadata. We wanna change that dropdown and we wanna choose Matt's copyright information. I'm gonna hit the import button. That'll bring that image into the Lightroom catalog. And you'll see right away, the image is selected. My copyright information is here, the creator information, the website. Uh, so this is something that's a huge value as you're moving forward with bringing in images. So every time you bring images for 2023, if you make sure that preset is set, it's going to populate that copyright information. So there's more to this. Let's go back in now and look at some of the other information that we can get uh, inside of Lightroom. So let's go back to our uh, full set of images. I'm going to pull up the original image here. And some of the other things that you're able to pull up uh, in the metadata info, which are I find to be very useful. Um, so basic info, uh, we've got file names. Uh, you can put things like absolute file path. Uh, not a lot of information I would change here, but the camera, camera information can be hugely helpful. Um, I like to include uh, the camera. I like to include the serial number. This will be the serial number for the camera itself. Uh, I like to include the exposure. I like to include uh, the focal length. These are some things that you just wanna go through and kind of look out for and see what makes the most sense for your images. Uh, IPTC Creator, I like to embed at least my email and website in there. Um, in some cases, I'll put my address, city, and phone number, but as long as I got the email and website in there, I think that's kind of the most important uh, information. You can see there are literally tons of fields you can apply in this particular case. Uh, so I'm gonna go hit done. And what you'll see right now 
uh, as this has brought up a ton of information um, inside the metadata section. So I can see now I've got my copyright information, I've got my camera model, and in this case, it's appended the uh, serial number to that. Uh, I've got my exposure 125th to the second at F8. My focal length uh, was uh, 200 millimeter. Let's go ahead and add one more setting. Let's go in here and put the lens in. Hit done. And you'll see the lens here is the Canon EF70 to 200. Another thing you can do inside of here is you can choose a range and you can drag the uh, different parameters around. So in this case, let's bring the lens up and put it right under the camera. Uh, we'll hit done. You'll see the lens has now moved up underneath the camera. So why would I want to have this information in here? What, what does this bring to the table? Um, specifically, this comes in handy with uh, wedding photographers, or if you're doing event photography and you've got either multiple cameras in use or you've got multiple people shooting multiple, you know, multiple angles of different cameras. If you're bringing in that serial number information, it makes it really easy to sort through everybody's images and figure out who shot what images. Um, in this particular case, you could click the serial number button and it would bring up a filter option and show you the different images. I don't have, I have a the common serial number for these, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the lens. If I click the button to filter by lens, click this right here, and then you'll see it brings up, okay, it's showing all the dates, the camera that was used, the lenses that are in the library, and by default, it's selected all the dates, all the cameras, it's chosen the EF7200 lens, and it's showing you that there's one file here shot by that particular camera. If I change this to the 24.105, you'll see now I have two images have popped up. So it just makes this a really quick way to find uh, images throughout your library. Uh, you can change this by, uh, you can hit none, goes back to default. And then if I want to see any uh, images that were shot with the serial number, for example, I hit the button. And like I said before, all these images were shot with the same camera. So the serial number is going to bring back the same images. Uh, but you can do these type of things with all, almost all the metadata. So if you want to search by a date, by default, it's set to this particular one. So it's what's, that's what's showing up here. And so it's just very handy resource uh, for being able to find information. So uh, again, you can set this up however you like. If you like this particular information and you want to use that as a preset, then we can just hit edit presets, go right down. Uh, go right up here to custom and choose save setting as new preset and let's say you want to call this my full pre my full metadata and hit create and hit done and now you've got a new preset here that'll be my full metadata that'll fill up all those images going forward it'll pre-populate with the right cameras the right serial numbers the right lenses just hugely helpful when you're trying to maintain your lightroom image catalog I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions about how to use the metadata information, leave them in the comments below. I love looking at the comments and I love trying to answer questions there. If you found this useful, it would be awesome if you would subscribe to the channel and hit the like button because that helps me understand what videos are helpful for people and what videos are going to make your lives a little bit better in the photography business. So again, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and get out there and keep shooting.